of the boat of WeShare Fest. It's the end of day two. And uh, Martijn, can you tell us uh, how uh, did you experience day two in comparison to day one? Yeah, it was a great day. It's, it started a little bit uh, more relaxing than yesterday because yesterday everybody was over here at, at 8.30 for breakfast and having croissants and um, uh, uh, watching the first keynotes. And today is really a typical French day. Everybody just starts really relaxing. Uh, some people arrive at 9, some, uh, some people arrive at 10. And in the end, uh, I joined some nice sessions and uh, talked to some nice people. And the sun is uh, coming back again, so that's good. So it was a, a good day. Yeah. The first session you attended was about uh, sharing hyperlocal stuff with, amongst others, Pierby. Can you tell us a little bit about that session? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, they had some really good discussions about the supply and demand uh, that you need for marketplaces. Because it isn't this hard to build a marketplace, but it's really... Uh, uh, hard to build a liquid marketplace that works and they share their their ways of how they build it uh, and also about their business models because there was one um, uh, marketplace to say okay we're just doing a great job uh, we don't need to make money because uh, my friends they are earning lots more money than I do but I have a great life I'm doing what I want so that's okay it's a really clear choice and the other platforms among PRB, they're still having trouble about finding their business model. Like PRB, they're saying, okay, our business model is we're going to sell micro insurance. So when I uh, lend your power drill uh, for a couple of euro, I can add an assurance. But at PRB, they're working 10 or 20 people. So they've got to sell lots of insurance to, to, to get uh, enough money to pay their rent. So I'm really interested about uh, the future model of these kind of marketplaces. And um, after that, w uh, what uh, you talked to some people of um, E, what was it again? Yeah, it's a good question about E-rated. E-rated. And it was another good example because when you look at the declarative economy and sharing economy and all the platforms, you see that there is uh, there's, there's now popping up lots of companies who are plugging in the platforms. Uh, so that's an ecosystem of companies who, who are suppliers for the platforms. And one of the most important uh, uh, questions now is, okay, how can we build trust? Because every platform has, has, has its own way of measuring trust, but at the end they're not sharing this information. And what they do, uh, you can uh, rent them uh, uh, um, when you own the platform and they are getting lots of information about trust from different other platforms and they take all this information about you uh, in different platforms and together they will say okay you can trust this guy so they're really uh, selling trust to different platforms so it's really interesting uh, we saw it again we saw it yesterday with trust tribe um, what do you think is the difference between because they're both uh, building on, on trust on the platforms. They're both a, a, a service that provides something with trust. What, what's the difference? Uh, I think these guys were much more clear than, than the guys of yesterday. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's one thing. And I think uh, the, the good thing is it's, 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 it's about the company I talked to today is that they're really independent. So they're using all the data from the other platforms. But they're not copying it. They're saying, okay, we're using the data to uh, make our own wage. Okay, how trustful are you? Um, and after that, you, you joined a, a, de a debate about um, how large companies can uh, empower the collaborative economy. Yes, yeah, it's really interesting, especially also the title of the presentation, because then how, la how large companies can empower the collaborative economy. So they're now focusing, okay, the large companies, they, 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 don't have, they, they don't have a problem, but the collaborative economy has the problem. So that's a little bit of turning ways around. But there were some really nice uh, examples of La Poste, uh, Castorama, about existing companies who are busy in exploring the collaborative economy. But there's a big challenge for these companies because they are just re like really big boats, like over here. Uh, so it's really hard to, 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 to change. Uh, so they're now busy with uh, or financing startups in the collaborative economy or doing some little products themselves to learn. But I'm really curious about how they're going to implement the lessons into their existing organization. Because did also they tell something about that in the session? Yes, they did some, but it, it didn't really convince me. Uh, but what uh, but, uh, I what did you miss? Really the steps they made, how to. And also the resistance they got from the organization and how they uh, dealt with that. And but what I really like that, that they're really open about, it, especially like La Poste, come on, the post, you know, in 10 years, nobody or hardly anybody will send letters. So they have to search for another business model. So for, for them, the urge to change is 
really clear. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk to the po uh, La Post tomorrow, so we okay. can ask them all about it. Um, is there anything else that uh, you find really m remarkable today? Yeah, what I like was the discussion about sharing cities and uh, also uh, some delegations from Amsterdam uh, were here to, 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 to share their stories. So I'm really, because then you, you got a, a really practical case about like in Amsterdam. And what's also nice is that they use the brand of Amsterdam for the sharing cities. Uh, so they are already building up a strong brand. And I'm really curious about what that will, uh, will lead to. Yeah. And what do you look forward to, to for tomorrow, for the last day? Now first tonight we have the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the party at uh, the rooftop of Blablacar. So uh, Kelly will finally see the Eiffel Tower. And uh, tomorrow there's another great program. We, uh, we have some interviews planned, so I'm really looking forward. Yeah. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.